Okay, I think we'll get started. So welcome to the Live Well, Stay Healthy Wellness Webinar Series brought to you by the Family and Community Health Sciences Department of Rutgers Cooperative Extension. My name is Rachel Tanzi and I am here in Monmouth County and I'll serve as a presenter along with Joanne Kinsey today. And we will both be basically hosting as well with the presentation on what's the catch New Jersey seafood. Certainly a topic we can all benefit from. So let me introduce to you Joanne first. I'll just give you a little bit on her background here. Joanne Kinsey is our FCHS educator down in Atlantic and Ocean Counties. She has specialization areas in nutrition, worksite wellness and healthy lifestyle, human development and laughter therapy. She has developed the Healthy on the Job Workplace Wellness Program, which provides evidence-based information on employers as well as their employees. And she is certified in worksite wellness. She is a certified worksite wellness specialist and also a registered yoga instructor. Then just a little background on myself. I also uh, work with the worksite wellness area and I work with food safety, community health education, nutritious eating, self-care, healthy lifestyles. I'm in Monmouth County and I have a background in nutrition, wellness, and healthy well-being. So now let's just kind of get started. October happens to be seafood month. So we're going to discuss what's the catch, New Jersey seafood and healthy living. The dietary guidelines are a critical tool for our professionals that was developed to help Americans um, make healthy choices in our daily lives and help prevent a lot of chronic diseases and help us create healthy diets and serve not only just to maintain healthy lifestyles and our healthy nutritious diets throughout our lives, but also be an evidence-based foundation so that we can maintain that um, sustainable lifestyle. So why seafood? Why do we want to eat seafood? Well, it's a very nutrient dense type of food. It often gets overlooked, I think, for many reasons, but it is very high in protein and it's a very lean protein as well. It has very low levels of fat. Um, it has low saturated fats as well. Saturated fats are those fats that are often found in animals, um, animal fats and it's very low in saturated fats. It can be low in sodium and low in calories as well. It's a very good source to replace other um, meat sources like beef and poultry as well. So the recommendations for um, seafood consumption for adults should be roughly two to three times a week, meaning about four ounces per serving. So that's about the size of the palm of your hand. So sometimes if you're going out maybe to a restaurant or you're even preparing it for yourself, you may end up having more than that and that's fine, but we would say that you're counting that twice then or you know one and a half or however much you're having. But then again, that's two to three times per week. So that's fine if you're having a little bit more and you're just counting it in, in that respect. Children about two years of age, we're recommending about one ounce as a serving and then children 11 years of age would have that same recommendation of about four ounces as a serving. So as they age and they get older, obviously it's going to um, go up so that two to two 11 years old, you know, you're increasing their ounces as well. So how are we doing? As a nation here um, in America, we tend to kind of fall below what the recommendation is. So if you notice, um, the recommendation is that the blue lines that you see on this chart, and we are in the little orange dots here. So you'll see we average out pretty much at the lower end of the spectrum. Both males and females are not getting what is recommend, recommended for what where we should be pretty much at any age. I don't think anywhere on the spectrum here are we falling where we should be. So it's pretty safe to assume that if any of us, generally speaking, were to increase our seafood and fish consumption, we'd be 
pretty okay to increase that consumption weekly and be, be good to go. So all the hype about seafood, really, here's where it gets good. So we're going to talk about that health benefit of the seafood. So most fish is very good for your health, very typically low in fat, and it's a great quality seafood, uh, a source of protein in that seafood. Very rich in vitamins and minerals, helping boost your immune system, your brain health, and your nervous system. Fish is very rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which are important for your heart health as well, and possibly even preventing strokes and may help protect against some cancers and other illnesses also. Fish as well as shellfish, so fin fish that swim, um, as well as shellfish are often an important part of our overall healthy balanced diet. So having a nice balanced diet with everything in moderation and having a variety as well. And it's recommended to eat a variety of fish and seafood weekly, as I mentioned, and preparing your fish with as little added fat, if any, and using a healthy method like baking, broiling, grilling, or steaming is recommended as well. So this chart is showing you, um, I have circled along the side here, some of the more common fish or shellfish that we have here in New Jersey, but you can really find many of the options at our local stores, if not the fishmongers that we have in New Jersey, but if, you, if you're getting them at the food store, they bring them in from other areas. So um, the ones that are circled are typically found here in New Jersey, and what I was pointing out here, let's just show you um, the blue crab, is if you look on the complete left side of the slide here, we have a rule that's the 520 rule. So if something is 5% or less, we consider it to be low in that category, which could be good or bad. It depends what category we're looking at. And if it's 20% or more, it's high in that category. So for instance, blue crab, if you go all the way over to the right, is 10% value in calcium. So depending on how much you're eating, it could be either moderate in calcium or high because, you know, if you've ever eaten a crab, it takes a little time to dig at that crab, use the utensils, you got to break the shell, you got to kind of have to dig out the meat. You know, it, first of all, you're burning calories doing it, number one. Number two, you know, it, it's time consuming. And by the time you get through one, you're, you're kind of really hungry by the time you get through there. So you probably tend to eat a decent amount of crab. You could probably be eating enough. This is based on one serving. We were talking about that four ounces, but you could maybe eat if you decided that day you were going to have more than that. You could be having more than that. And you could be even potentially having more than, let's, let's just say you doubled it that day and you had 20% of your calcium and now it's high in calcium and you had, you know, eight ounces of crab. So that would be high in calcium for blue crab. Now, for instance, clams, this is for 12 small clams. It shows over to the right, 10% vitamin A, but also 30% iron which is high in iron, just for 12 small, clam, uh, 12 small clams. That's really great to have 30% uh, iron. Then we have something like saturated fat. We talked about that for a, a moment earlier, that saturated fat is our, it's our unhealthy animal fat. However, going down to lobster, there's only 1% saturated fat. So that's actually great because even though this is technically an animal, but it's a fish, it's a seafood that, it's low in saturated fat. So that's wonderful as well. And also low in calories because there's only about 80 calories there. Oysters, again, we're also talking about 12 medium oysters, about 6% showing for vitamin C and 45% iron. Again, the shell uh, mollusks are high in iron. Scallops are showing, this is for six large scallops or 14 small scallops, we have 27 grams of protein. That's a nice large amount of protein. And then tuna, so a fin fish, we have tuna that is quite a nice, it depends whether you're having the steak or something like that, 
but you have a nice chunk of meat that would be 26 grams of protein. That's good, nice, lean protein. And then also coming down the list here is your, that's coming down with potassium here. And that's 14 percent in potassium. So that's a great source of protein of potassium as well and a great source for protein. So, you know, depending on where we're looking, this is just kind of a little snapshot of, you know, the nutrition facts, but I just sort of wanted to show you how some of the different fish and seafood might fall into that category and where, you know, different some of the different values um, fall and where what we're looking at. So one of the, the healthiest reasons is that fish and seafood really do help us in many different ways. Um, things like tuna and salmon can even possibly prevent against heart disease. Those omega-3 fatty acids with the cold water fatty fishes, so tuna, salmon, bluefish, all of those sardines and mackerels, all have a lot of those omega-3s, and that's really good for our heart and keeping our heart muscle very strong. Having that recommended serving, the three to four, um, four ounces, three to two to three times a week, are really is really important to help keep our cardiac arrhythmias at, at reduced rates and reduce the blood clotting risks and even possibly reducing tri um, triglycerides. So if that is either something that you might have to be dealing with, possibly running in your family, possibly something that you're not dealing with, but just possibly preventing in the future, really great health information to keep in mind. Also improving our blood vessel function, helping improve lowering our blood pressure, especially because as we age, these are just things that can naturally happen, not necessarily something that you might think of that, oh, well, I don't really have to worry about that because I'm in great shape, but it is something that might happen. So it is important to know that having the proper diet and the proper lifestyle can help maintain proper health and keeping your nutrition in check as well as your lifestyle and making sure that you're on top of things. So one of the healthiest um, amazing benefits is that heart health and those omega-3s, but also something called DHA, and I still will probably never know how to say that long word right there, um, but it also helps support that brain. And the brain is really important to help with um, just improving our memory function, helping have different brain boosting benefits by eating more fish. And since our brain has a lot to do with our nervous system and all the little neurons and a little synapses that are going on in our brain and all of the different neurological diseases and things that happen typically later in life, but can happen at any age, um, we really want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to possibly prevent anything that we can as well. So it stands to reason that um, the more of those healthy fats we have, the better. So um, consistent data has shown improved memory and learning retention helps reduce the rate of that cognitive decline with having that DHA intake. So by having some of these um, cold water fatty fishes, like I mentioned earlier, the tunas, the salmon, the mackerels, all of those cold water fatty fishes are really linked to having some of this great support brain health. And if you can, you know, maybe get a you know tuna that's encrusted with walnuts and things like that, which are also really great in omega-3s, you're doing even better. Because that if you think about it, a walnut looks like a brain in that little picture right there. They are wonderful for your brain health as well, has all those healthy fats, omega-3s. You take a tuna steak and you know they they have many recipes where you can make a even a pesto or something and use um, walnuts have it coated over your fish you're doing wonders for your body so we know that fish now i just told you you may have already known but now you know even more great nutrients right there it's also a really great source of lean protein we talked about that but did you know it has vitamin d Vitamin D is known as our sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D is this vitamin that our body will naturally make by just getting about 20 minutes of sunshine a day. 
And on most days, you know, we tend to get a little bit in and out of the house, walking, you know, having that sunshine kind of come down on us. We're not talking about getting a, getting a sunburn each day. We're just saying, you know, getting in and out, you know, maybe you're sitting outside for a little bit, getting that sunshine on you. You get about 90% of your vitamin D from the sun, but about 10% still needs to come from our food. So vitamin D is also found in fish and seafood as well. But we need some calcium to also have it absorbed into our body and be used to build those strong bones and teeth and maintain a healthy heart and muscles as well. And our nervous system uses it as well. So it's not just used the calcium and the vitamin D for just our strong bones and teeth, but our heart, our muscles, and our nerves also use it. So it's important to make sure that we're maintaining the whole package. A deficiency in vitamin D can lead to poor bone health. You could possibly get rickets, and it also can lead to the weakened immune system. We're kind of in the season right now um, where it's getting a little colder out here, and we need to make sure our immune systems are staying as healthy as possible, and we don't want to you know, increase any risk for even just a common cold. Um, so we want to make sure that we're staying as healthy as possible. And all of these things can also help reduce the risk for even possible some cancers. Fish also has um, a good source of a vitamin B12. The main job for B12 is to maintain the health of our nerve cells, as well as supporting that brain function and the production of DNA and RNA. Also, low levels of B12 is when we feel that like sluggishness and fatigue, um, maybe possibly even some dizziness and having even potentially numbness or tingling in our extremities. So this is where we need to make sure, you know, if that's something you need to have looked at potentially by a doctor, you would have to have um, testing done. But an average adult should consume about 2.4 micrograms each day and just three ounces of clams actually has 84 micrograms of B12, whereas salmon can have about 4.9. So having that variety of seafood and thin fish in our diets is really important as well because that's where it can stand to reason, you know, we always say, you know, eating a rainbow when it comes to fruits and vegetables, but also having a variety of proteins and in our diet also gives you different vitamins and nutrients as well. So having, um, you know, different things in our diets, and we're going to go through a couple more things here, will also benefit you additionally. So here, some minerals can also be found in fin, fish and shellfish. So this is where I was saying about the variety. Having selenium, zinc, iron, and copper is really important as well, making sure that we're having um, those in our diets, because we don't really think about it too often, but selenium plays a role in our metabolism, helping boost that immune system, and even enhancing proper uh, thyroid function additionally. Zinc helps fight bacteria and viruses and is crucial for our brain function and healthy growth. And iron is found throughout the body and is essential for our hemoglobin production. As well, uh, copper helps support organs and our systems like the immune system and our nervous system. And it may help protect against certain things like diabetes and heart disease as well. So these are all essential for our optimal health. That's what I was just mentioning, that we really need to make sure we have that nice variety and our, our diet in complete moderation so that everything kind of works together and has a good synergistic relationship with one another and that we're having a little bit of everything from everywhere so that we have everything working together. So here, I just sort of wanted to go over kind of a little summary that overall our New Jersey seafood and overall all seafood and thin fish is highly nutritious with very impressive benefits. It assists in both our mental and brain health, supports our nervous system overall, supports healthy bones, it enhances our immune function and promotes heart health and our circulation. Adults, we, eat, we need to eat about four ounces of fish two to three times weekly. And just to look at this chart here for pregnant women, if you can't really read that, it says um, foods rich in iron, uh, iodine, choline, omega-3s like seafood promote brain and spinal cord development in babies. For infants and children, 
foods rich in these things also support the brain development and immunity. For teens, foods rich in these things support rapid growth and development through puberty. For the adults, down below in pink, it says foods rich in these things like seafood help promote strong bones and prevent osteoporosis. And then for older adults, foods rich in these things help, help maintain muscle mass. And that's really important as well as we age. So again, all the lifestyles and all the ages and stages that we can be in, it's really important to make sure that we are maintaining all different areas throughout life and fish can help benefit all of them. So there's many options for seafood to be landed here in New Jersey. Um, so these are just some of them that we have spoken to um, some of our seafood experts here. We have some here in, in New Jersey at Rutgers and um, he gave us some wise advice. So many of which, these are just a few. Some, some of the seafood found right here in New Jersey would be sea scallops, oysters, lobster, black sea, fa sea bass, bluefish, clams, both quahog and surf clams, blue crabs, monkfish, summer flounder, also known as fluke, and then tuna, we have both blue and yellow fin tuna as well. And depending on different times of year and how different fish are running, you'll find obviously many other fish going up and down our shore, but some are, you know, coming and going depending on the waters as well. So this was just an, a, um, tip sheet that I wanted to kind of throw out there, being creative with your seafood, maybe have a taco night, a fish taco night. Um, don't forget that shellfish also counts. Maybe try calamari in a, in a recipe, having a seafood stew if you can, keeping it on hand. Um, you know, just if you, if you can have something frozen, a fresh fish is always great as well if you can't run out, but keeping it frozen is okay. Um, trying it grilled or broiled. Joanne is gonna go over some things with you in a moment here and keeping it um, safe for you and your family, cooking it, getting people involved will always help them try new things, keeping a variety and knowing your seafood portions as well. Okay, so I'm gonna throw it over to you, Joanne. Joanne, you there? Maybe she can't get her screen on. All right, well, maybe she's having technical difficulties. I can continue for a minute here. All right, so um, some of the guidelines when purchasing our seafood. Um, we always wanna make sure that we are buying from a reputable source. Um, there's many fishmongers out there, but um, really trying to get uh, fresh local seafood along the Jersey shore is a great source. But when you are purchasing, oh, there she is. I'll let her take over. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had an important call come in and I, it was one of those ones when you have to take it. Um, so, uh, okay. Thanks, Rachel. For, and thank you everybody for being, being so patient with that. Um, and uh, Rachel was saying that it's really important to get to know your fishmonger in your local market because that's the person you can ask honest questions about and serious questions about the seafood and where it comes from. And if they get to know you, they're more likely to, um, to really be honest with you and tell you um, where the seafood has come from. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know, I think we have a lot of really reputable uh, fish markets in, in this area. So I have a lot of faith in them. And, but I, when I have questions, I do ask. So um, your fish should never smell terribly fishy. And I'm sure that's not news to anybody here. And if you've ever purchased fish from any market of any kind, and if it, and you smell that smell, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, fresh fish should not smell fishy. So if it smells that way to you, then that's when your antenna should go up and you say, maybe this isn't the right purchase for me. And some markets, uh, I think most of them, if you ask, will allow you to see the fish once it's been cut. You know, if they take it out and cut a certain amount for you or a certain piece, 
let you see it a little bit more closely and you can get a little closer look at it and you'll probably be able to smell it. If it was not good, you would pretty much know it. Um, there, there can be a little bit of a salt water smell and that's perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's like most of our agriculture that we buy has a little bit of an odor, that's okay. But it should smell, not smell like bad fish. Um, when you purchase uh, shellfish, it should be kept alive until you're ready to prepare it. So that means you often see uh, shellfish, clams, uh, oysters, mussels on ice, packed in on ice with ice around them, they should not be sitting in water of any kind, but they should be packed around ice. And that sort of makes them dormant, so they're still alive when you take them home to cook them. When you do get your, your seafood home, no matter what it is, you should get into the refrigerator right away. And just in case it's a very hot day and where you purchase the fish and you're not gonna be home for a little while, make sure you have some ice in a cooler so that you can keep the fish um, at the proper te temperature because uh, you know that's a really important food safety issue to keep it fresh and alive until you cook it. Okay, Rachel, let's go to the next one. So when it comes to cooking seafood, um, it, it's really pretty much useful to cook it in many different ways. As you can see here, there's lots of different cooking methods. We're not really stuck with one one cooking method. So um, it depends on the fish though, and how you want to prepare it for the most part, but a lot of it depends on the type of fish you have. So baking is fine and you can bake in your oven. Um, if that's really great if you're cooking a whole fish or if it's a small fish that's breaded and uh, look for some time charts for that about how long it should take. Cooking fresh fish goes very quickly. So uh, you don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to undercook it. So pretty much this is where I think a, um, a thermopan, a food thermometer comes in handy when cooking fish. I always make sure I'm using it just to make sure that I get it to the correct temperature. Broiling is very popular for all kinds of fish. And that's because that would be a lot like grilling. It's a very high heat for usually a pretty short period of time. And you get a really great flavor when uh, you're, you're broiling your fish. And I'm thinking uh, what comes to mind right there is like scallops. If I'm cooking fresh scallops in the broiler, it's not gonna take too many minutes. It may take five minutes. It may take a little bit more than five minutes depending on how powerful your oven is, but it cooks very, very quickly. Steaming is also a very popular way of cooking fish. And you would cook it in, um, in a pan with a couple of inches of water under a pan. So it would be like kind of like a grill pan or even a, a basket of some time, a cooking basket or a, a metal basket that you cook the fish in above the water. So you're cooking it above the water. We're not poaching it in this case and just letting the steam cook it. Grilling is great. People love to grill fish all times of the year. And I think this is really a wonderful way to cook fresh fish. It has a really special taste to it. Never tastes fishy when uh, you've cooked it this way, but fish is very delicate and it falls apart easy in some cases. And I'm thinking of like our flounder, or our summer fluke here in New Jersey. So it's kind of a thin fish. You wanna cook it uh, in a grill basket or a grill pan. I have a couple small, grill pans that you set on your grill. And it's a pan that has small holes in it so that you get that grilling flavor and heat, but the fish can't fall through it. So um, if you wanna try cooking fish, that's a really great way to cook it. Just keep an eye on it, it'll cook pretty quickly. Pan searing would be uh, in a pan, you know, cast iron or any other kind of pan. Maybe there would be a small amount of like oil or some kind of uh, fat in the pan, not too much, and it cooks it very fast. And usually you cook the skin, you score the skin first, and uh, you either cook it skin side down and just cook it that way, or sometimes you cook it uh, skin side down and then flip it over for a short time. So you get that pan sear on the, uh, on the flesh of the fish too. 
Smoke fish, also very, very popular. I think people are doing a lot of that these days. It's a slower cook. You add a lot of flavor that, wa that way. Um, you have to be a little bit attentive to it. If you're cooking it for a long time, it doesn't mean you have to watch it every minute, but you do have to be careful uh, of how much time you're using when you're cooking it that way. Microwave works pretty good for fish. Uh, may take a little bit of practice to get the hang of it because what, when you're microwaving any kind of food, I'm sure you know, as well as I do, that if you overcook it, you're gonna have a, a rubbery kind of product and you don't want that in the end. Um, you don't wanna undercook it either. You wanna make sure the temperature is correct. So uh, consult a really good recipe about that. You can use a microwave safe dish with a lid and that is a really great way to steam fish in a really short period of time. Okay, Rachel, let's... Um, so uh, I've said this before, you don't wanna overcook it. That's not a good idea. It does not make for a very tasty or a nice product in the end. So if you're gonna you know, invest in cooking some nice fresh fish, then cook it properly and uh, make it really appealing so that you'll say, wow, that was really good. I wanna do that again sometime. If you're cooking uh, a fin fish, then the internal temperature is 145 degrees. So you'll notice that that's actually a lower temperature than for many meats, but uh, you can get to that temperature pretty quickly. So that's where a food thermometer really comes, comes in, uh, in, in handy. A meat thermometer would be the same thing. You test it in the uh, thickest part of the fish and you get the temperature on that. And then I usually check it a second time in a different part of the fish because different parts of the fish may cook differently. If it's a very thin piece of fish on the end, that's gonna cook really quick, right? You knew that. But the thickest part is where you wanna check the temperature because that's where you wanna get it to, to 145. You can also test the doneness with fish or how, how cooked it is by um, pulling on it a little bit to see if it's flaky. And a fork is really the best thing to use for this. Just take a fork and uh, kind of rub the surface of the fish a little bit and if it flakes, usually that's your sign that, that it's done. So, and you wanna like kind of dig the fork in a little bit more and make sure that it is flaky all the way through. Also, um, if it is flaky it, and you say, hey, this is it, it's done, then you just wanna let it sit about three to four minutes before you serve it. And that will help it to finish the cooking. If you're using shellfish like shrimp, lobster, scallops, the color changes. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Think about shrimp and the color they are, kind of a very pale, almost grayish, maybe a little bit, very slightly pink color when they are fresh, but when they're cooked, they're, they're definitely pink. And that's another sign. We know they're cooked when they're pink and the type of color has changed. So uh, fish is kind of like a little bit uh, not a see-through color, but it, it's, you can see the depth of it when it's fresh, but when you cook it, it definitely changes the color and it really fills in a little bit more. So it's more of an opaque color. Clams, oysters, mussels. Uh, this is the shell will open when they're cooked thoroughly. And, uh, you know, word to the wise is as soon as the shells open, that's when you want to remove that particular clam or mussel or oyster from the heat. So you do need to be attentive when you're cooking like uh, steam clams. And as they open, you want to probably pull them out of the pan to avoid them from overcooking. Because again, overcooking, even shellfish will become very rubbery and uh, not so tasty. Real important thing to know, if your shells do not open on their own, so don't ever try to open them, don't try to pry them. If they don't open, you discard that particular shellfish because if it's if it's not going to open it's not any good on the inside so be sure if if you have even one in the batch that doesn't open you get rid of it that means without eating it first so scallops oh boy uh, my favorite here in new jersey uh, is is the scallops and we get scallops in our markets pretty much year round here, which is really nice. And the nice thing about scallops is, you know, like that price is a little more than a year old. So they're more than that now actually in the cost, but you're talking about hundred percent edible meat. 
in terms of fish. So um, there's no fat, you don't have any bones or anything. This is 100% edible uh, protein. It's a very good source of protein and they are really very easy to prepare and cook. Cleaning them, pretty simple. Uh, you would maybe rinse them in, uh, in water to get off any extra sand and, and kind of inspect them a little bit. And then in some recipes, you would pat them dry, especially if you're pan searing your scallops um, in, in a more liquid kind of a base, you wouldn't need to do that, but you make sure they're clean and, and ready to go before you use them. They cook very quickly. Scallops in just about anything I've ever cooked, probably five minutes, seven minutes tops, they are done. And you'll know again by the color because the color changes, they become more white when they're cooked and the texture changes. And they actually sort of start to split a little bit. And that's also a sign that scallops are done. It's ready to take them off the heat. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. Well, this is one of my favorite recipes. I had fun uh, experimenting with this to get it to a point where I, I felt we could use it, consumers could use it. Um, I used a pound of scallops and, uh, you know, that may be too much. You can always cut this in half, but it does make good leftovers. I, I wouldn't let it go more than about two days left over in the refrigerator, but um, it, it, it's definitely, this is a pretty hearty recipe. I used crushed tomatoes. So I basically uh, cleaned my scallops, rinsed them off, got them ready. And then I started getting all my veggies, my peppers, onion, uh, celery in this case, and I had garlic in this one as well. Get that all chopped and ready before I start any cooking because that takes a few minutes to get all your chopping and everything ready. Then I started doing uh, the cooking in, in a pan and a uh, little bit of oil and got the veggies in there first and got them just cooked for just a few minutes. I don't, I don't wanna overcook them because I don't want them to be super mush in the end. I wanna keep them a little bit like al dente and uh, just get them cooked a little bit. And I added some seasoning. And this is where you could add your favorite seasonings, whatever you like. Um, and then I covered them for just, uh, for 15 minutes would be a pretty long time to cover them with the tomatoes and everything intact. After that's been boiling, even like 10 minutes in, you say, okay, it's you know boiling now really good. And it looks like it's all coming together, turning into a nice sauce. Then you wanna take your scallops and tuck them into the liquid um, for about five minutes. And then they will turn white and they're cooked. And I like this served over, over rice. Uh, brown rice is really great. Any kind of rice is good. Jasmine's really good this way too. Or it's great on pasta as well. So give that one a try. And you can find these recipes, uh, they're, on, they're on our YouTube page. Okay, so steamed clams, uh, another one, super, super easy. Like what took me so many years to finally steam clams myself? Little neck clams are very, very tender and they're the small ones. And what you wanna do with them is scrub them. And I use like a vegetable scrubber or something even harder than a vegetable scrubber. It's more like a, a potato scrubber for that that I use just for seafood and scrub them really well under running water. And then you wanna allow them to sit in cool water that has salt in it, well, a good amount of salt, like maybe a tablespoon of salt and a little bowl of water like that for up to an hour. Uh, clams are kind of magical. They work, they will clean themselves. So they're going to uh, like take the water in and then flush it back out again. So any sand and debris that they have inside the shells will be coming out that way, which is really a nice way that they help you by cleaning themselves. You can um, put them into a steamer basket and as you can see in the picture, my steamer basket is actually, um, you know, kind of a rubber material that can be used for this purpose. You may have a metal one that works really well too. So this, the clams are cooking above the boiling water. And this is again, where you wanna have about one inch of water under the steamer basket so that they aren't really coming in contact with the water, but the steam is what's cooking them. As soon as the clam opens, take it out of the pan. 
Sometimes if you let them wait until they're all open, you may have a couple rubbery ones and you don't want that. So, and if you have any that don't open, you're not gonna use that one. You're gonna get rid of it. And steam clams are so great, uh, served just with garlic butter. I like them with fresh lemon. You can uh, serve them atop pasta. Uh, and we do have a really good recipe for that for a white clam sauce on our, on our site as well. So check that one out. I think, uh, yeah, these are our only two recipes that we have in this presentation because of the amount of time we have here. But check them out online. We have several others and uh, it is seafood month. It's October. It's seafood month. So this is the time. We still have lots of fresh seafood here in New Jersey. Enjoy your local seafood. Um, this is the time to do it. Right.